So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen. I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. And you know it's time. It's conspiracy theory time. Conspiracy theories and unexplained mysteries. Listen, I'm so excited because I feel like everybody's getting unplugged out the matrix right now. They're either noticing or discovering UFOs, UAPs, different theories about maybe religion or ancient history. It's a lot of conspiracy theories out there we're discovering, all right? So we're going to keep moving along with different things. So real quick, before we get to the video, if you're new, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, join the family, and let's hit the like button, man, so we can get the videos out there and unplug more people out the matrix, all right? So with that being said, let's get to the video. Here we go. The Book of Enoch, banished from the Bible, reveals terrifying details about the true course of human history. Today, we'll show you what Enoch really saw when he was caught up with the Lord of the Worlds into the Kingdom of Heaven, and why the Church is doing everything it can to keep this incredible knowledge from us. Who was Enoch? Even though the Holy Scriptures are extremely sparing with their information about Enoch, the short passages are sufficient to recognize one thing. The biblical figure was anything but an ordinary man. Whoever wants to learn something about the life and fate of this person will first find what he is looking for in the Old Testament. Thus, we read in the fifth chapter of the book of Genesis, Enoch was 65 years old when he begat Methuselah. After the birth of Methuselah, Enoch continued his walk with God for over 300 years, fathering wow. sons and daughters. The total lifetime of Enoch was 365 years. However, it was by... Now, I know when I've talked to different people, right, and you, they mention or you mention Enoch to them, um, recently someone is saying that doesn't mean like he was alive 300 years. His walk with God was his walk with God, and it could have been in the spiritual form or it could have been in the 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 way they broke it down with me it could have been through life but you also have to remember they say he didn't die like a normal death like people do before they either go on to either whichever one you know what i'm saying with them saying he didn't die his way of living was was way different as the way people were trying to break it down for me so my question to y'all is how do y'all interpret that? Him living 300 years. How do y'all interpret that? I just need other perspectives than the ones people were trying to break down to me. The total lifetime of Enoch was 365 years. However, it was by no means only the exceptionally long life that made Enoch so special. But above all, an event that is mentioned in the Old Testament, only in a parenthetical subordinate clause. Enoch had gone his way with God. Then he was no more, for God had taken him up. But what was this decision of the Creator all about? How was it that Enoch was caught up to heaven without having to die? The Old Testament... See, that's where I get, where it gets kind of choppy for me. Was the 300 and something years included just the life on earth or wherever? Or is that 300 years and then... He goes on a God and just lives on forever, or is it, you know what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying without being too confusing? That's where I, it gets kind of choppy for me, trying to figure out how his life was chopped up as far as the years go, them saying 365. That Enoch was caught up to heaven without having to die. The Old Testament does not give us an answer to this question. A matter becomes somewhat more enlightening See? if we take a look at the New Testament in this regard. In the letter to the Hebrews, we learn because of faith, Enoch was caught up and did not have to die. He right. was found no more because God had caught him up. Before the rapture, he received the testimony that he pleased God. So right. far, so telling. But why did the Lord of the Worlds like Enoch so much that he granted him access to the divine realm? What had he done to win God's favor? Unfortunately, the official Bible offers us no further information about this. Accordingly, Enoch was listed in the New Testament 
only in one of the genealogies of Jesus Christ, and elsewhere warns against future false teachers. So at this point, we should put aside the common holy scriptures, and instead take a closer look at some unbelievable passages about which the church prefers to cover in the cloak of silence. The Apocryphal Writings I thought it was said that it was due to his faith now. So now they're saying they don't know which one is it. That, see, that's the, the, the issue for me. Trying to figure out which one is right, which one, you know what I mean? Or you start to hear more of one side. Do you believe that side or is it the other side? Because I was under the assumption it was due to his, his faith, his unwaverly faith that he had is what God saw in him and allowed him to not have to go through death and just call him up. Basically, the Apocrypha include those religious writings that refer to the Bible, but were not included in the official canon or were later removed from it. In the case of Enoch, we have three banned sources at our disposal, the Ethiopic, the Slavic, and the Hebrew Enoch. So let us look at the texts one by one and find out what really led to the rapture of the biblical figure. While the individual sections of the Ethiopic Enoch book were written at different times, the roots of the oldest part probably date back to the 3rd century BC. Incidentally, the work owes its name to the fact that it has survived in its entirety only in the ancient Ethiopian language, primarily because the Ethiopian church does not reject the book but considers it an official part of the Bible. Divided into five books, we first learn that Enoch is not a simple earthly, but a prophet who, among other things, receives a vision of God's future judgment. However, the Ethiopian Enoch book is by no means limited to the eponymous person, but also gives us detailed insights into an incident that was once to spread fear and terror among the people. The fall of the angels. Uh, maybe that was something I overlooked. He definitely wasn't like human. He was he was more immortal in a sense. So okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Doesn't fully answer the question I had, but it it takes my mind to a different place now. I guess wants part. to spread fear and terror among the people. The fall of the angels. Thus, the servants of God are described here by no means as pure innocent beings but as voluptuous figures who give free rein to their urges. According to this, a host of angels around the leader Semjasa decides to descend to earth to make human women their own. Overwhelmed by the female beauty, the renegade angels henceforth beget countless descendants. However, they are not peaceful hybrids of humans and heavenly messengers, but brutal giants who plunge the earth into absolute chaos. When God becomes aware of the doings of his servants, his anger is boundless. So he decides to push the fallen angels into a blazing lake of fire on the day of judgment. At that time, he wants to conjure up a devastating flood to wipe out the bloodthirsty giants. Now I know this isn't going to be popular with everybody, but I have to say what's in my mind, what pops up in my mind. Does anybody else, does Anybody else think to themselves when they say that God was in anger and rage like that? I just can't pitch. You know what I'm saying? If you grew up in the household that I did and the spiritual household that I did, and my mom was very religious, right? So you didn't look at God as having anger or wrath or something like that, you know? So for me to hear him being angry and him to push his ang angels into this burning whatever, it just makes me look at him like, what? But this is supposed to be God, though. But how is he having rage and anger? You know? Not to say that he can't. It just seems a bit odd to me to hear that growing up learning about him the way that I did and hearing my mom talk the way she did and preach the way she did and scriptures and everything like that. You really don't hear that side of him like that, his wrathly side, you know, not to say it is, it has never been mentioned, but just to hear that, it just, I don't know. I just had to say that though. I wonder if anybody else feels about that way. Panicked by the creator's judgment, 
the angels turn to Enoch and ask the prophet to plead with God for mercy on their behalf. However, the Lord of the Worlds sticks to his decision, which Enoch then delivers back to the angels. Subsequently, he is granted the great honor of ascending to heaven and admiring the divine kingdom in all its facets. Later, Enoch returns to earth once again and sees in a dream how his great-grandson Noah builds the ark and is saved from the flood. Furthermore, he receives a vision about the fate of the world and the people of Israel. After Enoch tells his son Methuselah about it, he finally ascends to the kingdom of God and never returns. The Seven Heavens I mean, would you? <laughs> Why am I coming back to this when I've gotten to there? I don't understand that one. But what does Enoch behold when he is admitted to the biblical paradise? What wonders unfold before his eyes? Well, to find out, it is worth taking a look at the Slavonic Book of Enoch. In it, we read that the prophet is visited by two angels who then show him the heavens. For in fact, it is not just a heaven, but a divine realm, which counts a total of seven levels. Thus, each level houses its very own inhabitants. In the first heaven, Enoch beholds the clouds and the stars. In the next, the angels who fell upon the women are waiting to receive their divine punishment. The third level is then what we would commonly call paradise. This is where the God-fearing people are taken after they die. However, to the north of this stage is also hell, where the souls of sinners are tormented. In the following realm, Enoch marvels at the sun and the moon, as well as the various gates through which the heavenly bodies pass during the year. While the sixth level is home to gigantic guardians, God is enthroned in the seventh and final heaven, alongside the most eminent angels. Once there, Enoch is given the task of writing down all that the archangel Bertil dictates to him. While the prophet learns all the hidden secrets about heaven and earth, he writes 360 books within 30 days. Afterwards, he gets the task to return to earth and to reveal the received knowledge to his sons and to hand over the copies to them. After Enoch has done this, he goes up to heaven for all eternity. Enoch the Angel Job well The content done. of the Hebrew book of Enoch is in a similar vein, even though it differs significantly from the other two in some respects. While this writing originated only in the Middle Ages, drawing on significantly older sources, it is officially classified among the esoteric literature of Judaism. In this book, however, it is not Enoch who appears as a narrator, but Rabbi Ishmael. The latter ascends to heaven and finally stops before the gate of the seventh realm. Since Ishmael is afraid of being pushed into the depths by the servants of God, God sends the angel Metatron to protect the visitor and accompany him into the seventh heaven. There, Ishmael again sees the Merkaba, the so-called throne chariot, which is also mentioned in the vision of Ezekiel. Soon Ishmael asks Metatron for his name, and he answers he has altogether 70 names. Then the messenger of heaven reveals another important detail of his story. He was once the man Enoch who was raptured by God and later transformed into an angel. Mm. Controversial Interpretations In view of the presented contents, a fundamental question arises. Why were the apocryphal Enoch books not included in the Holy Scriptures? After all, the biblical figure is also mentioned in the Old and New Testaments. The official Bible can- A lot of us are still trying to figure out the answer to that question. Why were they left out? Why weren't they in there? Why they're not as talked about? I feel like today they are, um, through the help of different avenues, social media being one included, I feel like they're starting to be talked about more, but I'm pretty sure when it does, people gonna have questions, a lot of questions, rightfully so. And it also speaks of Enoch's rapture, although it is not described in as much detail as in the Enoch books, of course. Well, in this respect, some people who have a more alternative point of view believe that the church has banned the passages for a good reason. They contain a revolutionary knowledge that completely overturns not only our religious, but also our secular view of history. 
But why is that so? Because after all, also the official Bible version is not stingy with miracles and sheer unbelievable experiences. If one follows the followers of the pre-astronautics, then the Enoch book is rejected by the church because it reveals the true figure of God and the angels. We remember the advocates of this parascientific currently are firmly convinced that the ancient people received regular visits from extraterrestrial intelligences. However, since the ancient peoples were not able to explain the advanced technology of the aliens, they were attributed to a supernatural or rather a divine background. Transferred to the story of Enoch, this means what the prophet interpreted as an ascension into a divine heaven was in reality nothing more than an uncanny encounter with the third kind. Say, the angels were in reality extraterrestrials. The kingdom of God... Do y'all think people will actually have their response to receiving the information about Enoch? That they're going to attest it to alien beings instead of a religious form? I don't... I don't necessarily think that. I mean, it could... But to me, that just that doesn't change anything. It didn't for me. I can't speak for everyone. I can only speak for myself. I just don't see that happening. That everyone will then turn and think, okay, that's what it is. It's more so uh, a link to uh, uh, aliens and stuff like that. I, I just don't get that. Maybe it's just me, though. Their spaceship or home planet and the creator himself a kind of commander-in-chief of the extraterrestrial fleet. Following this, some pre-astronautics argue that we are not at all the result of a divine creation, but rather the result of a highly complex genetic experiment. Now, one could ask oneself why our extraterrestrial creators have turned away then from us, because after all, they would have given themselves in the past still openly to recognize. The corresponding circles meet this argument as follows. They have not turned their backs on us at all. They observe us since always from the hidden one and will appear soon in order to protect humans in view of the exploitation of the planet and the innumerable wars from self-destruction. And now we're curious about your opinion. What do you think about the events described in the Enoch books? So that's what y'all think? That's what they think? That we would view ourselves as abandoned by the aliens? Descendants of aliens. That's what we are. That's what y'all would think that would be. That's the, the one of the conspiracy theories or the reasonings from banning that book from the Bible. Interesting, 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 interesting. I don't think I would have ever arrived there, but OK, I guess maybe. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. That's an interesting place to arrive. We were abandoning and we are descendants of aliens and abandoned by aliens. They still keep a monitor and a watch from afar. So maybe that's why we see them, we see them be elusive in the sky, but they haven't really harmed us or done any damage to us because we are one of them. So they don't wanna hurt themselves. Is that what it is? I don't know about that. I don't know. But interesting nonetheless, uh, uh, a good conspiracy theory. Y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what you think. And um, this one is pretty interesting, <laughs> I have to say. Y'all let me know. Leave a like, share the video, subscribe, and stick around and stay tuned. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.